Hello everyone. Today through this video you will learn about the cell cycle. I hope you all have at least a vague idea about the cell cycle since every one of you learn it in your A levels. So let's start. I'll take you through this topic cell cycle in three sections. Uh, first one the phases, then the second one control which is brought about by cyclines and CDK and at last the gene p53 and its relation to the cancer but uh, in this video you won't be able to find a lengthy description about the phases and i recommend you to go through your a level notes about the cell cycle and do a quick review and uh, that um, information about the phases of the cell cycle is enough in this video i will be focusing more on the control of the cell cycle and about the gene p53 and its relation to the cancer the definition of the cell cycle is it is an ordered set of events occurring in the cell during the period between two mitotic divisions in more simpler words it is the things that are happening inside the cell between one mitotic division and the consecutive next mitotic division here you can see the four phases of the cell cycle first phase being the gap one then it leads to the synthesis phase then to the gap two phase and finally the mitotic phase here on the right side you can see a graphical representation of the relative time each phase take during the cell cycle now we will talk about the things that are happening in each of the phase first the gap one phase in gap one phase of the cell cycle the protein content inside the cell and also the rna content increases the protein content that is increasing are actually the proteins that are needed for the dna replication for an example uh, for an example the enzymes that are needed for the dna replication and the next phase is the synthesis phase uh, this is the phase where dna replication occurs dna replication means in simple words uh, the content the chromos the number of chromosomes inside the cell doubles uh, in other words the diploid cell become a tetraploid cell a diploid cell is a cell that has two sets of chromosomes and tetraploid four sets of chromosomes. If we take human cell for an example, it has 46 number of chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. And during the synthesis phase of the cell cycle, these 46 chromosomes become 92. And then comes the gap 2 phase. In gap 2 phase, also protein content increases, but here the proteins that are increases are the ones that are needed for the mitosis. For example, histones. Uh, I think every one of you know that histones are needed to make the chromatin structure from chromosomes. So, in gap 2 phase, those proteins increases and also the cytoplasmic content. For an example, organelles such as endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria, they are also the number of number increases. And in mitosis, cell division happens. So basically, the, the, the two gaps, the gap 1 phase prepares the cell for the synthesis phase and gap 2 prepares the cell for the mitosis phase. So when one particular cell completes one cell cycle, it can produce two daughter cells. I think you all can remember during mitotic phase, the cell division occurs. So one cell can produce two cells. These daughter cells have two options. They can re-enter the cell cycle if still more cells are need to be produced or they can enter the G0 phase. In this diagram, you can see that after mitosis, 
the cell can either re-enter the G1 phase, that means start another new cell cycle or enter the G0 phase. So what is this G0 phase? It is known as the dormant or the undividing phase. So that means the cell, the cell does not divide and it is at a resting phase. And you have to remember that most of the cells in the human body are at this G0 phase. And in this phase, the cell undergoes normal metabolic reactions like respiration and excretion. Now we have come to the second part of our topic, that is the control of the cell cycle. Since this cycle is closely related to the DNA content of the cell, this needs to be properly monitored and controlled. If not, it can lead to the production of different types of mutated and cancerous cells. So this monitoring is done via checkpoints that are situated at several points of the cell cycle. So what is happening at these checkpoints are they detect for the damages of the DNA, damages of the chromosomes and so on and if any damage is detected what they do is at checkpoints the cell cycle is stopped if no any damage is detected the cell cycle can continue so for this continuation of the cell cycle there are several compounds that are related to this continuation those are called the cyclines and the cycline dependent kinases so next we'll be discussing about how these cyclines and these cyclin dependent kinases affects the continuation of the cell cycle. Here you can see a small description about the cyclines. The cyclines are nuclear proteins and there are different types present as A, B, D and E. And cy these cyclines has their own uh, cyclin dependent kinases for an example cyclin D acts with its kinase cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6 and another thing is that their concentration increases and decreases at specific phases in the cell cycle. Now let's talk a bit more about the relationship between these cyclin CDKs with the checkpoints. Let's take the checkpoint G1S that is the at the end of the G1 phase and at the beginning of the synthesis phase there is a checkpoint and the cell is being checked at this checkpoint and they didn't find any damage to the DNA in this checkpoint. I think you can remember in the G1 phase they check for the DNA damages. So the cell is permitted to proceed to the next phase. Now cyclin D comes into action because its concentration is high at the end of the G1 phase. The cyclin D does certain changes to the cell and it allows the cell to proceed to the next phase. Here in this table you can see the different types of cyclines and their relevant kinases with its relevant function. But in this video, we'll be talking only about the cyclin D and its kinase CDK4 and 6 as it involves in the regulation of G1S boundary. That is the boundary before the synthesis phase where the DNA replication occurs. Because past this boundary, we cannot stop the DNA re replication. So cyclin D is an important regulator in the cell cycle control. Now we'll get a general idea about how these cyclines and their kinases work in the cell cycle. First, these cyclines activate their relevant cyclin dependent kinase aka CDK and forms a cyclin CDK complex. Then this complex goes and phosphorylates substrates that are needed for the progression of the cell cycle. Well, phosphorylation means addition of a phosphate group to a compound. By adding so, they can either activate or inactivate compounds in the cell. So, 
the cyclin and CDK complexes phosphorylate compounds that are needed for the continuation of the cell cycle. Now we will come to the example cyclin D. I told you the reason why cyclin D is important just a while, while ago. So the cyclin D activates its relative dep cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6 and form a cyclin CDK complex. Then it phosphorylates a substance known as retinoblastoma. This retinoblastoma is a substance that stops the release of a certain factor known as E2F. By phosphorylation, this retinoblastoma is inactivated. Since retinoblastoma stops the release of E2F, by inactivating retinoblastoma, it releases the transcription factor E2F. And this transcription factor is needed for the production of proteins that are required for the cell to progress from G1 phase to S phase. Actually, these are proteins that are needed for the DNA replication since DNA replication occurs in the S phase. So, this is how the cyclin D and its relative cyclin dependent kinase act to allow the cell to proceed to the next phase of the cell cycle. Now we have come to the last section of our topic cell cycle that is the P53 gene and its relation to the cancer. Before going into that section, it is better if you have a clear idea about how DNA repair occurs. If there is a damaged DNA, it is detected by the sensors in the cell and the cell cycle is stopped. We call it cell cycle arrest. Then, if the damage can be repaired, the DNA is repaired and the cell cycle continues. If it cannot be repaired, that means if the DNA damage is so severe that it cannot be repaired, the cell needs to be destroyed. We call that the apoptosis. So, the cell cycle arrest, DNA repair and apoptosis, all these three functions is mediated by a certain D gene known as P53. Now let's talk a bit more about this P53 gene. P53 gene plays a major role in checkpoint control. It has the ability to stop the cell cycle and it comes into action when there is a DNA damage in the cell which is detected via going through the cell cycle. So what this P53 gene does is it inhibits the cyclin and CDKs and stops the cell cycle and take necessary precautions to repair the DNA damage or to disrupt the cell. Now you must be wondering how this P53 gene is connected to cancer. Actually, a cancer is a situation where abnormal cells divides and multiplies at an alarming rate forming a mass of cancerous cells. So when P53 gene is mutated, it cannot stop the cell cycle even if there is a DNA damage. So when P53 gene is mutated, there is uncontrolled cell division or division of new cells which leads to cancer. Now let's talk about how this P53 gene acts in detail. First the DNA damage is detected by the sensors. Uh, they are called as ATR and ATM. The sensors are ATR and ATM and then they activate checkpoint kinase. It is an enzyme which in turn activates P53 gene. Then this P53 gene calls for the P21 protein. I think you have an idea about how a gene calls for a protein via protein synthesis. And what this P21 protein does is it inactivates the cyclin CDK complex. So what happens when cyclin CDK complex is inhibited is it stops the cell cycle because I 
told you earlier that the cyclines and CDKs are needed for the progression of the cell cycle. By inhibiting them, the cell cycle is arrested. Then, the cell cycle is either sent to repair its damage or it's, it, is sent for, it is sent for the apoptosis. If the DNA is repaired, it can continue the cell cycle. So, this is how the 53 gene is involved in suppressing tumors. Therefore, it is given a name as tumor suppressor G. So, we have come to the end of our video. I think you got at least a little bit of knowledge about the cell cycle from this video. And uh, I wish you all the very best and thank you.